Well, we're going to be looking at distance and midpoint today. This is going to take a bit. And uh, hey, listen, this is a, kind of a new formula or vocabulary set up here. So no worries. Just go ahead and start doing a four column uh, thing on your vocabulary. We have our th uh, two words, midpoint and distance, and the definition, a picture of it, and then write. OK, so go ahead and put me on pause and then write that into your vocabulary sheet. I'll be right back. OK, welcome back. Take a look underneath the right column, the R-I-G-H-T. Um, distance says distance of KL is 3, C, uh, three centimeters or KL is equal to three, uh, 3 centimeters. I need you to look at the notation there. KL in the first one has a bar above it. That is red. The distance of the segment KL is 3 centimeters. Or, and then notice the KL, KL the second time does not have a bar. In, there's an equal sign. It, that's red. The measure of KL is equal to 3 centimeters. It's really important that you have the correct notation there. If you're talking about an equation, like the one there uh, says KL equals uh, three, 3M, you're going to leave the bar off. It's assumed that you're talking about the length of a segment. If you're just writing it in a sentence, the um, you have to tell me what kind of um, object KL is. So you put above it KL with a little segment. It's not KL with a ray above it or a line above it, a segment. And so uh, the segment KL is 3 centimeters. All right, so make sure that you get that into your vocabulary and you understand what we're talking about. Let's move on. Okay, when we're starting another sheet, completely different than your vocabulary, it's called a formula sheet. This thing's going to grow. So um, some people set up a piece of paper on graph paper or on a, um, a computer, and this thing's going to grow to be about 30-plus formulas that you're going to have memorized by the end of the year. If that scares you, I want you to know that all my students did it last year, and you're just as brilliant as they are. So let's look at those formulas. Go ahead and write them in. Go ahead and put me on pause. Write them on another piece of paper, and you can store it back there with your vocabulary for now. Now, and we'll be setting up your folder soon. Uh, write those in. Okay, let's talk about these real quick. If you look at the midpoint formula, midpoint is a point that's halfway uh, in the center of a segment. Okay, we just talked about that. So it's a point. If you remember, a point has an x and a y value. So this particular point is going to have an xm value and a YM, okay? And so those letters, and in, in this case, the numbers that are underneath the X's, you know, X1, X2, they're down below. They're not up at the exponent place. They're down below the, uh, the letter. Those are just ways for me and you to know uh, that we're talking about different X's that are coming from different points, okay? So um, that formula is going to help me calculate the x and the y value for the midpoint. And, of course, the distance formula, that's going to help me uh, calculate a distance. And, uh, again, we have those uh, lower uh, numbers, a 2 and 1, on those x's and those y's. That will help us keep track that there are two different ones going on there. Notice the x's are put together. And also, this 2 up here is a square, right? You've got to remember that. And there's another square over here. Also, this is very important, and I want to point out, in the um, midpoint formula, this is plus. Okay, A lot of times students will put a different symbol in there, but you need to remember it's plus. You're adding together the x's and the y's and dividing by 2. Okay, I'm also pointing out that in the distance formula, between the two quantities, there's a plus. But in, inside the quantities, there's minuses. Okay, So don't get those mixed up by getting them reversed. That's very important. You'll get a different number. Let's move on. Okay, so we're going to look at finding um, the the uh, place that's halfway between uh, this negative 4 and this 2. A very simple way of doing that is to take the negative 4, add it to the 2, and divide by 2. Okay, you've d probably done this before. Uh, it's basically you're averaging those two values. Like if I gave you two tests and asked you to average them, you'd add those two numbers together, divide it by 2, and that would give you a number halfway in between. So in this case, after doing this math, you end up with a negative 2, a negative 1. OK, so apparently negative 1 is halfway in between the number negative 4 and negative 2. We're going to use this concept to find the midpoint. OK, here we have on a um, piece of uh, graph paper a um, a segment and it has two endpoints a is negative 1 and 5 and the other one B is 2 negative 3 and we're just going to simply use our midpoint formula to find out which is the point 
that gives us our midpoint. So we're looking for that XM, YM point here. All right, let's do the math. Okay, so there's my math. So I went up and for uh, the XM, I went up and grabbed, I went up and grabbed the X there and down at the other end, the other X, and I plugged them into the midpoint formula. And so there's my math. I'm going to do the same thing for Y. Here we go. Okay, as you can see in the green there, I did the YM values. So I just plugged in the Ys and did the calculations. If you need to, pause, look through my math, make sure you understand it. All right, so we have found our XM and our YM. Now let's put that together and find our, and just write our midpoint. So our midpoint now is going to be um, one half, the X goes first, then the Y of that, okay? So let's just double check that. So let's see, we're gonna go ahead and label that and circle it, midpoint. Okay, so we'll circle that because we found it. Let's just plot that point, make sure that indeed it's uh, it should be a, you know, a midpoint for the segment. So I'm gonna walk over about halfway in between here and then up to one. And there I have it. And so this is M. We can call this M as well. Okay. So there's our midpoint. And certainly that looks like it's a midpoint. And most importantly, it's on my segment. If it wasn't on my segment, it can't be a midpoint. Let's move on to one to allow you to try it now. Okay. Now this one, I'm going to have you try. So what's going to happen is I, I'm going to have you um, go ahead and work on this. And then, um, but I'm going to have the work on here for you to check. In uh, just a few seconds after I'm done talking, I want you to put it on pause, do the work, and then you're going to come back and check it. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to find out what the points are, the values for S and T. So just take a look at the graph, find those calculations, and, um, and then start working the, the uh, midpoint formula. Uh, keep your work nice and neat. Uh, do your X values first, then your Ys, and then put it together to form a, uh, a point called N. So at this point, go ahead and put it on pause. And then come back here to check your work. Three, two, one. All right, and there you have it. The, the two sets of maths, one for the XM and one for the YM. Okay? So last thing, let's go ahead and call that M. We'll call that midpoint M. Put it together. Call it uh, 5, comma 5. This is coincident. It has to be both numbers. The last thing I want to do is just plot it, make sure that it does inf indeed fall on my segment. And it makes sense. It does look like it's a midpoint. Very good. So there's my midpoint. I'm very happy with that. I got our stuff to check, and we're moving on. So here's just doing one where you don't have a graph. You have two points just sitting in space, and they're written down. So I'm going to go ahead and do the work real quick. You uh, can follow me. Here we go. Okay, so notice I always start off with writing the formula. You need to memorize these formula, and the best way to do that is to start writing the formula. So before you use the midpoint formula, instead of jotting in the numbers right away, write the formula and then start writing in the numbers. Here I go with the Y. And there I have it. All right, great. Let's go ahead and pull the information together. Call it point M. And we have the midpoint. Now, we don't have it on a graph. If I had time, I'd go ahead and plot this on a graph and see if it works out. Let's uh, go ahead and move up. I want you to go ahead and do this one uh, on your turn. So go ahead and take a look at that one and uh, do that one on your own. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you put it on pause, and then you come back and check your work. Here we go. Okay. So hopefully you had something like that. I'm okay with improper fractions, meaning fractions where the number on top is too big or is bigger than the bottom one. And so you could have wrote uh, 2.5 uh, 2 for 5 halves. That's no problem. But the midpoint here is 5 halves, comma 7. All right. I hope you did that one okay. If not, pause it here, go back and look at where you might have made a mistake and correct it. Okay, this is a slight variation of the problem. It's where you're given one of the endpoints. Instead of two endpoints, you're given one of the endpoints and the midpoint, and they're asking you to find the other endpoint. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to set up the equation and put the appropriate information. I'm going to go ahead and label over the uh, points uh, x values. Um, so take a look at this. So if, so if you take a look, I, I put an xm and a ym over that midpoint of 5, 5. And so uh, by uh, labeling it that way, I'm not going to make the mistake that some students have where they put the uh, 5, 5 in for the x2, y2. So that's not going to happen. Let me set up the equation, run this problem. 
Okay, so if you notice, I set up the equation without anything in it, and I start plugging numbers in. I took the 4 from the x1, and I plugged it in down here. And then I took the xmx, and I plugged it in where xm belongs. Okay, so there's that x2. That's the x value for the other endpoint that we need to find. Now, I need to get rid of that 2. And so probably the easiest way is I'm just going to multiply both sides by 2. If I multiply this side by 2, that'll cancel that out. But I'm going to multiply the other side by 2 as well. So that leaves me with a 4 plus x2 equals 10. Brilliant. So now you're just down to that. That's a simple algebra problem. And we have it. All right, let's go do the work. Okay, once again, I wrote down my original uh, part of my equation uh, in green there. And then I just plugged in for the first y1, the y1 I called y1 over here. And then I plugged in um, the xm, which I called um, xm over there. I just plugged, or ym, I put over there. Now I'm just going to simply do this again. Let's get rid of that 2. Do you remember how we got rid of it? Look over to the left of not. We're just going to multiply both sides both sides by 2. This is going to be the standard operating. That's going to cancel that out. And that's going to leave me with 3x, 3 plus x2 equals 10. And then simple algebra from this point on. Okay, so there's my, uh, the, whoops, I've got, I've got x's in here. I am so sorry. This is already difficult enough. We don't need to make it any more difficult. So let's get rid of some of this uh, stuff where I made mistakes. All right, so we have... Um, y2 and that's what we're trying to find and y2 here and that gives me y2 there so now it's just a matter of calling this end point uh, it didn't ask me to label it in any way we'll call it I will just call it L and uh, it's 0. 0.6 comma 7 so that's the end point right so supposedly there is some segment out there right Um, that has L as one of its endpoints, K as the other point, and M as the midpoint. They gave us these two pieces, and we just found that piece. All right, let's move on. Okay, once again, you should be taking notes. So as I was doing that problem before, you have that written down in your notes for reference. And if not, then please rewind this video and start taking notes as a standard. Let's take a look at this one. This one's your try it. So go ahead and do this problem on your own. Put me on pause, and then come back and get your work, check your work with me. And there you have it. Okay, so you've got 7, negative 7. All right, you know, there's going to be times where I'm going to make a mistake on my video uh, mathematically, and I don't want you to fret over there. The, you know, I want you to look at more of the, uh, the work that we're doing. Uh, if something confuses you, then again, at the top of your notes, you should write the question mark so that next day when you come in, you have it. Okay, finding the distance between two points, super easy. You probably actually have done this before, but no worries if not. It's very easy. So it's just a matter of having the formula, plugging the numbers in, doing the work. So let's get going on this. There you have the distance formula. Notice I have the x2 minus x1. The order doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's just that if you put whatever point you classify as x2, we'll call this one x2 down here, if, then this first one over here has to be y2. Okay, so that's really important. Okay, no big deal. So let's just uh, take that and plug in the numbers and uh, do the calculations. And uh, we'll talk about that symbol. If you're not sure what that means, we'll just briefly talk about it. And if you need more help on that, you can go and search Google. So the first step is write down the formula without anything in it. Now we're going to bring the numbers down. I'm going to actually go ahead and write above each number or each point above what x1, x2 is, uh, x1 and y1 and all those things. All right, let's go ahead and plug the numbers in. Okay, there you have it. Got the numbers in correctly, hopefully. And now it's just a matter of simplifying underneath what we call the radical. We're going to take the square root of this when we're done. Okay, so we've just been working underneath the radical there. Um, notice um, where this is at, right? When we talk about squaring it, we're going to take a negative times a negative, and it's going to become a positive. This was really fortunate that this turned out to be zero. That kind of made it eliminate pretty quickly. But because we're squaring, um, all three, uh, both pieces, this piece, because we're squaring this piece and this piece, will always result in a positive, two positive numbers being added down here. So if you ever get to this point right here, and you have a negative, 
you've done something wrong in your math and you need to go back and look at it. Sometimes it's you've put a negative in here where that plus sign is. So just go back and check your stuff. That should be result in a positive number. Well, hopefully you know the square root of 49 is 7. Okay, so if you need help with figuring out what a square root symbol and how to operate that, you need to come and see me. Okay, so with those notes, you go ahead and do this problem. Put me on pause, check yourself, make sure you know how to do it. I'll have the answer here in a moment. Okay, so if you take a look at this, you'll see that uh, I kind of um, switched around and made my X2, Y2 the first one and the other one. Just to kind of show you, uh, most likely you made this one over here, uh, X1 and Y1. Uh, but I want to show you that we're going to result in the same exact answer. So I'm going to keep on running this, and you can watch my math unfold. Okay, there I have it. So uh, I ended up with a uh, distance of 8. So I'm going to go ahead and write distance equals 8 over here. I'm going to circle my answer. Okay, that's good form. Take a look at my equation. I wrote it. Okay, I know this equation by heart. I write it all the time. I need you to know it by heart. And for those people who get what I'm saying, you're going to be writing that every single time when you go to do it. Because uh, the more you write it, the better you get. Notice I have an equal sign each step. Don't forget that equal sign, okay? And that leads me back to my final answer of D equals 8. Hope you got it. Okay, these are your uh, you try it problems. Um, <laughs> And so what I want you to do is actually want to take these problems and you're going to do these on your own on a separate piece of paper, separate than your, your notes. And this time, when you walk into my classroom, you're going to hand me this piece of paper with your name on it. Not 10 minutes after, not three minutes after. You're going to turn this in and this is for credit. Make sure you have your work clearly shown and your answers circled. Good luck. Take care.